What's up everybody, welcome to John's Daily Hook. So today we're going to modify my AgriFab pull behind aerator because as you guys know last season I ended up breaking it and it just has a few weak spots. Some of you experienced AgriFab pull behind aerator guys probably already know exactly what I'm talking about by weak spots and stuff that breaks. So here let me show you what I mean. So for starters I ended up breaking the hitch and as you guys can see it might not show up actually it doesn't look like it's going to show up in the screen or in the camera anyways all you can see part of it. Right there, the hitch ended up bending. Some of you guys may know, you really can't back up with this too much. And I learned that the hard way. I backed up, remember I had 160 pounds on there. And this part right here completely bent in half and it just dumped over, dumped all my weights off. So we're gonna try and strengthen the hitch up to where it doesn't bend. I could replace it with one that's not already been bent, but if I'm gonna mess this up and it doesn't work, I'd rather mess up one that's completely already broken anyways, instead of messing up one that's brand new. So then my other complaint is actually in the wheels. As you guys can see, this is it in its operating mode. And you can see there's, I don't know, maybe an inch from the ground right there from the tines. So when you're pulling this along, if it goes over any type of bump or uneven terrain or when you're, you know, jumping up on driveways, those spikes will actually dig into the driveway or at least leave marks and scrapes and stuff and it drives me crazy. We're going to try to extend the wheels out a little bit. I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to work, but we're going to at least give it a try. The easier fix might actually be to just try to find a bigger wheel to put on it. But I had some scrap metal laying around the shop anyway, so we're going to give it a try. And then my plan for the hitch here is I've got this angle iron I'm actually going to mount to the top here and to the side of this. So it's going to look something like this mounted there and then I'm going to cut pieces right here where my hand is to connect right here. It's kind of hard to show you guys with only having two hands but we're going to try and connect it there and we'll see how well it works. It should in theory in my head at least it's working pretty good by holding this this piece here tight to that to where it doesn't allow it to bend down here. But I'm not an expert and I could be completely wasting my time but hey you guys will get to make fun of me and see it along the way. Okay, so all I'm doing right now is holding the angle iron up to the aerator itself and marking on the angle iron where I want to put my holes on it to where I know when it's going to poke through and actually mount and connect or at least be bolted through to the aerator. And then, of course, you guys see me right here. I'm drilling through it. And then I'm actually going to take that angle iron and put it back up on the aerator and mark it so I know that they line up well, which you guys already know how to do that. Now, this piece here that I'm cutting right now with this angle grinder um, enjoy this nice little slow motion shot of course, but this piece I'm actually cutting here was actually supposed to be one of the angles or one of the metal rods going for the wheels, but I ended up changing my mind on the wheels, which I'll address that here later on in this video. I have another idea for the wheels, but anyways, that's why you see the little three white dots on that piece of angle metal there that I'm cutting off. Um, I had the white dots on there because that was supposed to be where the wheels mounted. But anyways, this is actually going to go mount up on the hitch. You guys will see in a minute. Probably what I'm saying doesn't make any sense to you guys. But here in this next clip, after the slow motion goes away, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It gets mounted onto the hitch and the angle piece that I was just previously drilling out. And it'll kind of make it one, connect it and make it one piece. And it'll make it pretty sturdy. And at least in my head, it seems to work right, and it shouldn't bend at all, but we'll see what happens. Now, yesterday's video you saw was my first use, and I'll put a clip in here again at the end of this. So this is what I've got so far. It's already mounted. So now I'm just going to make a little measurement here on, I want two of those pieces to mount here and here. So, you know, put a bolt here, here, and here, and here, and the parts that we're going to put here. You guys will kind of make sense if you can't picture it after I get it put up. And in my head, anyways, that should help keep it from bending because it's mounted to here and here. And then it'll be mounted here, not allowing it to bend. I don't believe this whole thing will bend because this is pretty strong. All right, so here's what we got so far on the hitch. I do believe I'm going to stop with just one. I'm not going to put the second one here. I think the second one might actually be overkill. We're going to leave it like this and see how well it works. You know, of course in my head, it's well secured to here and to here. And this one should not bend that way anyways. And it's secured there and attached there. So in my opinion, this becomes a part of this now. And essentially it shouldn't bend down, which is what it was doing. 
So anyways, I'm excited to give it a try. We'll see how well it works. One update I ended up doing is I came back and I actually cut it flush here because what was happening was that little piece sticking out was actually hitting the back of the mower where this mounts. And that did help it quite a good bit, but it still hit it. So what needs to really happen long term is you actually need to take this whole piece here and move it down here just a little bit to give you a little bit of extra more room. But this wasn't terrible. However, when I would go to make left turns, the mower, the back of the mower did keep bumping into this. And you can actually see it, it slightly twisted it this way now, and it actually twisted that that way. However, the whole thing didn't bend like it was doing before. So I do believe there's still some more life left in it and we could still use it a little bit. Now don't let this video discourage you from buying one of these as these aerators are absolutely great. They're great machines. I've made a lot of money with them even out in the commercial field and in commercial use and you know you guys know I use and abuse them and I mean they paid for themselves in about a week's time. There's just a few things that have to get worked out on them or you just have to remember that you can't back up with them and you really can't put a whole lot of weight on them. But then again, you could be in a situation or scenario like I've been in where you have to put more weight on it for it to impact and actually core aerate the ground as well as you might be in a position where you have to back up and just know that over time you will damage it. Now moving on to the wheels, what I have decided is I'm going to leave them alone. For what it's worth, I'm not going to go through the trouble at making an extra piece of metal here to make the wheel stick out just a little bit further. What I might do is try to find a bigger wheel to replace it. You know, maybe a wheel that's like an inch or two in diameter bigger, and that should help give me a little bit more clearance. For the most part, I don't believe that adding any extra length to this bar here will actually gain me anything in giving extra wheel length. I actually think it will hurt me in the long run because I think it'll create maybe like a teeter-totter effect with this. And because the actual blade engagement or to put this in aerating mode, it actually lifts these blades or lifts these wheels up. What I believe that might do if I make these wheels longer is it might constantly put leverage on it, constantly putting it in operating mode, if that makes sense. So I think for now, I'm just going to leave the wheels alone unless I come across just a bigger size to replace them. Anyways, I hope this helps somebody out or any of you guys out there that own one of these that might be having a little bit of trouble with it. I'm hoping maybe I can spark your brain a little bit there and maybe you can think of some better way to do it or some better way to make this piece of machinery or piece of equipment even better. Now, as I said, it's an absolutely great piece of equipment. It's a great aerator for its price and for everything you're getting for it. There is links in the description below if you guys are interested in buying one of these or their dethatcher, or I think I even have a link for their pool behind spreader in there as well. You guys can go check those out. I always appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys can think of something else better I could have done other than replacing it with like a front mount aerator or something like that. But if you guys could think of some better little tweak I could have done to make it operate a little bit better, please comment it below so other people can see it and maybe it'll help Maybe it'll help spark their creative thinking. Maybe they can figure out a better way to make it even better than that way. So comment it below. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And thanks for watching. Yo.